Hey guys, this is Alex Chess one and today I'll be explaining to you how to use bubble sort. Now bubble sort basically is a sorting algor algorithm which will, which you can use to sort an array. Now here we got a set of numbers which will explain to you how bubble sort actually works. So what bubble sort can do or is what we do with it is that you first select a value. So it's the first value. You don't actually select it. I'm sorry, but uh, so it's the first value. Then it looks at the next value. Then it determines if the first value is bigger than the next value, so it's greater than. And if it is, then it will switch this with this and this with this. And that's what it will do. And that's what uh, it will continue to do that from left to right, so that way, until it's sorted. Okay? So let's go ahead and open up our IDEs. So I have my IDE open now, and as you can see, I've created a static int array, which holds the values that you just saw in the paint program. So they are 5, 1, 12, negative 5, and 16. And now in our class, we're going to be implementing two, method, uh, two methods, one of which will be our uh, method that will print out the sorted array, and the other one that will be actually doing the sorting. So let's go ahead and create um, a public static void print method. So public static void print array. And let's go ahead and make it just a print statement, not a print line statement, print. And in this statement, we'll just type in uh, the sorted, sorted array is. And now let's go ahead and make a for each loop or some people call it the enhanced loop. And this will basically iterate through the array and print out um, the values. So for, since it's an int array, we got a int i, and then array. And if you're not sure about um, for, loop, uh, for each loops, check them out. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out. So check that out if you don't understand what I'm doing here. So system, here let's just go and print out i. So system.out.print i. And we're making space because we don't want everything to be cluttered, right? So there we go. That's our basic print array. Let's leave a comment. Uh, print array. And let's go ahead and now make the method that will do the sorting of our array. So my sorter method. So we'll name this my sorter, just like comment kind of public static void my sorter. And now what we're going to do is a bunch of things. So let's go ahead and first declare a variable called temp. And this variable is very important because we need to store the values that we're switching into a temporary var variable and then a uh, variable to repopulate um, one of the array indexes, right? So um, that's going to be very useful. Next, let's create another variable called j, and we'll set uh, this to zero also, and I'll explain why we have this afterwards. And now let's go ahead and create a variable, uh, a bo boolean variable called is running equals to true. And we'll use this for our while loop. And this is extremely important. Without this, nothing will work. So while is running, we're going to go ahead and create a while loop. So while true in a I guess while true. Um, first thing we need to type in is is running equals false. And I'll explain to you why we're doing this afterwards because we got to make everything first. Now we got to increment our j um, variable. So j plus plus simple as that incremented by one. And let's go ahead and make a for loop which will go through the array uh, and check if the values equal or not. So for int i equals to zero i is less than ray dot length minus j and i plus plus so now is the time to explain why we have a variable called j what's the purpose of it so the purpose of j is to basically determine the length um, that the program or pardon me the for loop will run now we don't always want it to run um, you know the same length so in our case it's five right so we don't always want it to run five times we wanted to just run less we wanted to keep running less and less right as we go 
So in this case, right now, I'll run five times. Next time, it'll run three times, and then so on, so forth. And now let's go ahead and create an if statement. In this if statement, we'll be comparing the um, first variable with the second variable, and then switching them around. So if ray i, so if ray with the index of i, whatever i is, is e uh, is greater than sorry is greater than ray i plus one because we want to look at the next value. If you remember from our paint program, we always want to look at the next value. So if it is greater than the next value, then what do you want to do? What do you want to do? So we want temp our temporary variable to equal to ray i because we're going to switch this variable. So we need to store it somewhere else. Now what we need to do is set to set ray i equal to the next value because we know that value is less than we know that value is less than our current value i plus one and now what we need to do all we need to do rather is set our ray i uh, plus one to temp because we know that ray i plus uh, uh, i plus one is greater than um, ray i right so it's equal to temp and that is basically it. We got one more thing to go and we're done. And now we set is running equal to true. There we go. Now, let me explain to you why we're doing this. See, when this program runs, it's going to go through the for loop, right? And we got to indicate to the while loop that, you know, somehow we're done. We got to indicate it somehow. So we're going to use a Boolean variable. And what we're going to do is so if let's start up from the top so while is running equals true the next line we just set it to false right because we want to check if we're done or not and if it if it's still running then it'll set it to true and it'll run one more time right so that's what we're that's why we have is running equals to false and in our if statement we have it to true and we have it in if statement because we want to return if it's actually running if we're actually doing any sorting because if we're not we just want to stop and that's why it's basically there so let's go ahead and save all of our stuff and go up back up to our main method. And first, of course, we need to sort our array. So my sorter. And then next, we need to just print our array. So array. And there we go. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see, it's sorted our values. And that's awesome. So bubble sort is working fine. Now there are some problems with bubble sort that I'm not going to really explain in this video, but you can go ahead and look in the description where I, uh, I'll give you the link um, for bubble sort, and you can you know figure other cool things uh, out uh, by looking at that web page. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope my videos helped you, and I'll see you guys later. And if you have any problems, be sure to comment.